Hello, everybody, and welcome to IP Global's latest podcast, The 10 Minute Market. Um, I'm joined by usual co host Jeremy Marshall. How are you, Jeremy? Hi, Will. Yeah, I'm very good. Nice to be back. Well, look, today we've, we have a lot of questions about buying in the UK, um, the process, and we do get a lot about sort of this freehold and leasehold scenario. And it comes up a lot, and I think it's important that people sort of understand how the English legal system works. So we're going to cover that today. We're going to talk a little bit about the differences between the two titles. We're going to talk about why it's structured like that. Um, and I think we get this a lot, not so much from local investors that sort of know the laws because obviously they're resident there, but we get this a lot more from international investors that are looking to invest in the UK and kind of have some questions and sometimes concerns about this topic. I th- yeah, um, I think you're right. I, th- I think it's like a possibly a bit of a hangover as well. I think there's some embedded thoughts about freehold versus leasehold with the idea that freehold is, you know, obviously would be the better option because you've got full ownership. Um, and it's a bit like people having a, a predisposition to think that, you know, debt is bad. So that, you know, like, you know, should you take a mortgage? But, you know, in, in terms of uh, property investment, I think it's uh, there's no right or wrong answer definitively. Um, but, you know, it, for some people, it's absolutely right for one and, and other people, it's right for the other. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's why it's worthwhile, I think, to probably kind of just break down what they are um, effectively so people can understand what type of property would suit you for what occasion exactly and it is a bit complex but to make it simple and to explain it simply i'll I'll try uh but but effectively in in england so what you have is you have a piece of land uh that is that someone owns the freehold of typically you know a freeholder obviously and then you have a building that sits on that plot of land and then you have apartments that sit on that that sit under a leasehold that then the uh, the owners of those apartments own that leasehold it's often a question I get, oh, I don't want to buy it for a freehold um, will because um, I don't want to buy a leasehold, but I only want to buy a freehold. But it's like, well, you do know, Mr. Client, that you can't actually buy a, a freehold apartment in the UK. It does, it's not recognised by the legal system. So the structure is that you have an owner of the land and you have apartments that have leases on. And the main reason this is the case, actually, is because of the the, the covenants in the lease, the, the, the actual enforceability of, of, of various terms in the lease. So it's protection really for everyone else in that property in, in a way so that someone can't go renegade and start, you know, changing their apartment significantly to potentially damage or, you know, affect prices or, you know, attractiveness of, of the other apartments in a building, basically. So there's a general rules and consensus for everyone. Exactly. And someone can't choose to not pay their service charge, right? It's not fair if Flat 12 doesn't pay a service charge for 10 years. If Flat 12 doesn't pay a service charge for 10 years, the lease will allow the freeholder to actually go and seize that apartment and 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 and, and claim ownership of that apartment because that that leaseholder is not obligate is not uh, meeting their obligations of the lease. So actually very important things. Also you've got to think about it like you've got a building that needs to be maintained. So you've got this service charge but it's not fair that the person on the top floor fixes the roof because it's in their structure because everybody's benefiting from that roof because the water's going to leak down through, through all the apartments if if the if the roof isn't maintained so again it just deals with all the intricacies of who's you know who's paying for what and who's responsible for what basically and thankfully in the UK they tend to make waterproof roofs uh as standard because they're used to a bit of rain uh un- unlike some of us here recently <laughs> I think uh, yeah we've been it's finding a work from home day where we are in Dubai isn't it but I think this is it it's the, it's the um I think the idea why people sometimes have this predisposition to think that freehold might be better is the idea that it's more control. And it is absolutely true. Uh, you, you have full rec- control and responsibility um, for the property if it is freehold. So, I mean, should we should we kind of detail, you know, the, the basics of what are the benefits and what it means then to, to have a freehold title on a property? Absolutely. Yeah. So let's start with freehold. Um, so basically, let's look, use an example. You own a house freehold because you own the plot of land that that building sits on. It's all it's yours. You're free to do what you want with it within, obviously, the sort of laws of, of nuisance and, 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 and permits and planning permission. But you're responsible for maintaining that that building. So when there's a damaged roof, it's your obligation. When there's a, a rising damp, it's your obligation. So that's something that you need to consider because 
you need to maintain that building it's your responsibility and it might not be that you maintain it over a period of time it might be that you need to suddenly do some major work to that building and that's often what happens with people that buy houses they buy them they're like great I've, i'm in control i don't have a service charge like i would with the leasehold but ultimately we, we know what happens in life life goes by you don't maintain the building properly and then suddenly you've got a big bill for something that perhaps you should have fixed a long time ago yeah, exactly. And so you've got a uh, complete free will basically to have your property and do what you like with it within the parameters of law. And um, conversely, then for, for leaseholds, fundamentally what it means is, uh, you know, you might have a lease, uh, which is probably I mean, for anything like a new build, probably at least 250 years old, going up to 999 years. Um, and, and that effectively means you have the rights on that property for that length of time. And then you'll have a, a right to renew that lease by law in the UK. Uh, if, if it gets down to probably people start to look at re renewing them when it gets to maybe 83 years left on the lease, basically. But um, for older properties, that's under consideration when people are buying. For newer properties, it's you know, it's, it's basically irrelevant because you could probably pass this property down to your great, great grandchildren. They're still not going to get to the point where they need to start renewing the lease. But but for leaseholds, it's kind of a matter of how hands on or hands off you want to be. So for people who want to go and live in a property, it's much more considerations. Uh, freehold is maybe slightly more attractive. But for, if it's pure investment, you know, if it's something that you want to make a return from uh, and you don't want to be hands on with a property, then a leasehold um, can be actually very useful, very effective, because you won't have the headache of dealing with upkeep and repairs because you're paying a service charge for a management company to deal with all that. Um, you won't have to deal with kind of local social issues, for example, if you've got noisy neighbours, um, that's going to be dealt with um, locally as well. You know, if, you, if you're a freeholder, you, that's your issue to basically take up with people. And so if you're someone who wants to buy a property, hold it for 10 or 15 years and, you know, let the markets do its thing, having this managed for you is very effective. And the cost of that with a service charge is actually very reasonable, you know, because part of that will include uh the insurance on the property um so that's kind of aggregated across the amount number of apartments in the building uh and so insurance would be in there and the maintenance of the, of the property um whereas if it was a freehold then of course you have to pay for insurance annually separately um and, and uh well particularly if you're getting a mortgage um but yeah you know it, it just means then that you have the ability to own that property and have it managed for you um uh, overall which 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 is just what uh, international investors want, which is the, you know, the, the market that we kind of deal with heavily. So an, as an international investor, you really want something that's fully managed. That's something you don't have to try and find a plumber, find a, a builder, find a, a contractor to start doing major works on a building when you're not even resident in the country. That can become very challenging. Um, I think one of the major things that people historically have considered, because up until 2022 in the UK, uh then ground rents was a consideration and so that would be written into the contracts and so you'd pay a, a peppercorn i mean very minimal uh, a very uh, small rent to the freeholder uh every year ongoing and then that might rise with inflation over time but the governments basically they they, they understand that they want to make things easier for people with leaseholds and so the the ground rents are effectively taken out from 2022 so actually it's literally just your service charge is what you have to pay for there is no kind of ongoing quote unquote rent to pay to the freeholder from now on so that's freeing everyone up um basically to you know effectively have proper ownership of the properties with no liabilities ongoing or with no kind of question marks of what will that ground rent rise to in future um which is a, a massive benefit and a very good change from the government Exactly, Jeremy. And that was the Leasehold Reform Act uh, 2022 uh, that came into force in June 2022. And one, one thing you pointed out there, and I think it's important to touch on, is there is a bit of a, a difference between sort of leasehold and freehold structures in different countries. So you've mentioned that you have a right to renew, which you do in the UK, but there are countries that you don't. So, you know, I met someone recently from the Philippines where they had a 99 year lease that was ticking down and wasn't renewable. And that actually exists in other countries. I mean, I'm in the UAE and that, that happens in certain free zones of, of, of other countries. So very important to know that in the UK, your leasehold is renewable and you have the right to renew that lease um, within your within your contract. So it's not a, a sort of ticking down, depreciating form of title, which some people think it can be when comparing it to other countries. Yeah, and I think I think in terms of 
they're, they're, for someone who is dead set about wanting some, you know, freehold or equivalent, there are options out there in the world still in, in markets which are safe and viable and secure. Um, and we've dealt with a, a handful of those over our 20 years or so. Um, the most obvious examples that spring to mind, um, and they're structured in slightly different ways. Um, but Scotland is different to England in the UK. Uh, and and Germany also uh, apartments in Germany don't operate under the same system. So you, if you bought an apartment in Germany, that would be um, freehold. Um, but do you want to explain a little bit of the difference? Germany and Scotland, they're different different words used, but effectively it's a kind of common hold structure, also known as strata structure. So if you own an apartment, you own that apartment, and you also own a share of the freehold. And when you sell that apartment, you would sell that share of the freehold. And that's just the other structure that exists in some countries and it works very well. Um, you haven't got an external party basically appointing a, a facilities management company. You've actually got a collection of owners appointing a, a facilities management company. And just touching on that, because that's where it sort of comes back to the UK and it's kind of why in the UK, in, in England, sorry, why in England that Commonwealth hasn't really taken on is because you actually have the rights in the UK as a collective to manage your own freehold there can be no r reason for that you you literally have the right if you get a majority to take ownership and manage your own freehold and actually you have the right to enfranchise your freehold which means that effectively as a collective majority if you can form one you can buy the freehold from the freeholder so you've got this legislation in place that protects you should you want it um, and that's really why the UK kind of continues to work on this sort of freehold leaseholds scenario. But then I've mentioned in other countries, the laws are slightly different and they allow for different structures such as Germany and Scotland, which we're both active in, actually. Yeah. So look, I, overall, I think there's no such thing as a right answer uh, versus freehold versus leasehold. It's about your personal situation and the type of property you're going to buy. The one thing there is potentially is a difference between a good lease and a bad lease. Uh, so that's basically you want to be looking at just getting a nice long term lease, you know, have your lawyer check that there's no funny covenants in there, um, which basically, you know, any properties probably built and um, from 10 years ago or onwards are going to be very clean in that ma manner. Um, and so if you could uh, avoid having a property with ground rent on there, that might be a, a, an advantage um, so you can have a, a new property. Uh, and then, yeah, it means that, you know, if you're someone who wants to buy a property to have a hands off experience and have that investment just work for you, um, then leasehold is likely your your preferred uh, avenue to take. Exactly. Now, I hope we haven't confused you all and I hope you found that useful and we look forward to seeing you on our next podcast. So please do like and subscribe.